the Nigerian Export Promotions Council, amongst other agencies that are coming up every single day to ensure that data is captured, mm. especially with respect to trade. So I think data is um, one area Nigeria is lacking. And then the next thing I would like to say is um, stability of our currency, the FX. Mm. That's, that's also another very main challenge for Nigeria. A lot of investors who consider factors before working into any economy or any country to invest would look at how stable your market is. So I do think um, with, um, with the aspect of, of, of foreign currency, we haven't done so much with the FX. So data is one of the challenges we have right now. FX is one of the challenges. And then maximizing local content. We're coming up in that regard. Back in the day, we are, you know, gone are the days rather where you see a lot of foreign organizations, a lot of foreign as international bodies and people coming to execute projects in Nigeria without mm. necessarily integrating the masses. Local content is also one thing we were basically lacking in the past. But now we're seeing a lot of Nigerian organizations, Nigerian, Nigerian companies measuring up the standard, be it in the oil and gas sector, be it in the agriculture sector, in the health sector, to name a few. So for me, data has always been a problem. And then FX has always been a challenge, local content. But we're not there, but we're, we're making steady progress. So um, when, when you look at, for example, uh, the data that you speak of, you have access to certain data in Nigeria that yes, unfortunately... In Nigeria, we don't. We often don't share such. It's it resides within a cluster of some key people. You you might even say that, uh, unfortunately, again, some of this uh, data that has been gathered might be more available to some external organizations and parties than it is to the locals in Nigeria. But with the access you have to our data, how badly is our economy doing? And how strong on the other side is the economy, the true picture of Nigeria? Okay, in a personal opinion, I would say we're not doing so badly, if I have to be very honest, comparable to what it was in the past. We've made some mistakes. And at the end of the day, every government comes into power and they're trying to adjust and see how they can, you know, cover up loopholes and make progress. So if you're looking at what we had in the past, I mean, of course, way back we had... Um, our Naira competing favorably with other currencies, the USD and so on, and it has it deteriorated, depreciated over time. But if you're looking holistically at the economy, we're not doing so badly. So back in the day, our major source of foreign um, foreign income earning was oil and gas, mm. the proceeds from oil revenues. And now we're diversifying from oil to mining, to agriculture, to energy, to health. So if you're looking at the country holistically, economy-wise, the fact that we're diversifying the fact that there's a diversification from oil proceeds is a step in the right direction. Mm. But in generality, if you're comparing us to where we were in the past, you know, things were, more aff- things were more affordable. We had more people investing in Nigeria. But over time, there's been so many factors like security, discouraging investors. There's been so many other factors like scarcity of FX, like I did mention. Mm. FX is, is it's an enabler. It's a pointer to whether or not people want to come into your market. The more stable your market is, the more you have um, uh, access to foreign exchange earnings. So if your foreign exchange we- er- earning capacity is weak, it sends a very negative signal to investors, and that's what we're seeing now. I think that's one of the challenges Nigeria is critically battling. You know, the areas of um, f- um, foreign exchange earnings, the areas of security, and permit me to say, I I do not go on any on any media channel, radio stations, TV, without talking about the relationship we share with the U.S. Um, the U.S. is doing so much in the areas of security. Recently, we do know they've been training, you know, our military personnel, our mm. paramilitary personnel, the police force. That happens periodically. Periodically, yeah. periodically. That's one of the many investments um, from the U.S. government to Nigeria. And then in terms of security, we do know that the Northeast is um, one of the worst hits across the continent of Africa, if not, in the, if not the rest of the world. So... Every single year, U.S. invests at least 330 million U.S. dollars to Nigeria for humanitarian aid just to assist people who are badly hit in some of these areas and, you know, in some of these places. So, in essence, what am I saying? People look at a lot of factors from security to how strong your your foreign exchange earnings are Mm. before they make the decision to invest in your society or your economy. Nigeria has a lot of bilateral um, agreements. Yes, uh, we have a lot of agreements with international organizations. Yes, we, um, one of the most controversial, which many Nigerians, including myself, having read it, uh, would say, "Thank God we didn't sign it." Is the Economic Partnership Agreement with the, with the EU, which was said to have um, would have completely collapsed the manufacturing sector. It will have given more uh, powers to European goods than mm-hmm. things from here. But when you look at uh, agreements, are we making the best of it? Are we milking it enough to the benefit 
of Nigerians. No, 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 not at all. When you look at agreements, um, I'd like to speak specifically to Agua. Agua, yes. So I wouldn't want to. I, 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 wanted, I wanted to take it step by step yes. in general okay. before we come to Agua okay. because okay. So, Agua, so, we can't compare what happens in Kenya and Ghana to what we do with Agua and Nigeria. But generally, before we come to Agua, yes. Okay, so in generally, I do not think we are maximizing the best of opportunities that are inherent in, in, in agreements, bilateral agreements, mm. trilateral agreements. Again, like I did mention, we, we're not where we want to be, but we're making progress. So with every administration, you have a minister for trade, you have your minister for foreign affairs who ensure that, you know, they put together all of these processes, they put together all of these conversations to see how we can further the discussion to maximize the benefits of these agreements. So you did talk about the EU. At the end of the day, manufacturing is very key. So for any economy, you have to be more ex- you have to be more export dependent than import dependent. The mm. proceeds from exports should surpass the proceeds from imports. Yeah. That is the only way, you know, it, the, the the what's the word now? The growth, the growth of yeah. your economy it has to be a lot more than your population growth. Mm. So if your economy is growing faster than your population, the, the possibility Anyways. of having inflation is very low. Okay. So you have low inflation. But at the end of the day, if your your population is growing higher than your economy, you have like maximum really high inflation. That's what we're seeing in Nigeria. So we have over 300 million people in Nigeria. The population is consistently growing. Nigeria is, 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 is arguably becoming, you know, one of the most populated countries in the world. In the next couple of years, if we're not careful, we might be among the top five, top mm-hmm. six. Now, if the population is growing and the economy is not growing, of course, inflation is, is, is without a doubt unmissable. So the point here is we are not maximizing the benefits of a lot of agreements we're having. A lot of times we don't even understand the context of these agreements. And even if we do, bureaucracy, you know, change of policies, a lot of governments are really not interested. They're interested more in the short-term benefits, you know, getting grants, getting loans, getting aids. Instead of putting in the work on these agreements, reading through the pages, seeing how much we can invest our time and energy on implementing some of the strategies that are that are necessary or obtainable from these agreements, we don't do that. We just like to deal with the short term benefits. So in general we we haven't we haven't we, we're not maximizing the gains and benefits of various agreements that Nigeria has gotten into over time. And then I did mention Agua. Agua, yeah. Now, and when you talk about uh, we not maximizing, who are the we? Uh when such an agreement is signed, who are the key players or let me say we have the primary players you have the secondary players what role do the people play because when you talk about agreements Mm -hmm. who is meant to go out there and take advantage of it and Mm -hmm. how Mm -hmm. thank you very much i mean that's a very valid question so when you talk about what role do people play government has no business doing business but government has business creating the environment that is conducive for businesses to thrive so it is not private sector individuals who represent nigeria going out to sign these these agreements it's the Mm -hmm. government so if any any company organization is coming into nigeria for instance you have to work with some government agencies whether or not you like it you didn't just come in there's their licenses you need to obtain Mm -hmm. there are some rules and regulations you need to follow their tariffs you need to be you need to deal with their taxes and so on so the agencies whether you're talking about nipc nepc corporate affairs commission security exchange commissions in the field there's so many agencies some of these agencies are solely responsible in ensuring that a lot of these agreements are kept and then for the government, when you talk about the government, you're not just talking about the federal government at the helm of affairs. You're not just talking about the Senate. There are various ministries. So you have the Ministry of Trade, you have the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, you have the Ministry of Health, Women Affairs, and so on. They are responsible for ensuring that the agreements and, and the trade deals that come in from these countries are emphasized. And, you know, what's the word now? They, they are, they are, the, the rules and regulations are adhered to, to, the, to the later. Okay. And then from the ministries, it transcends to the companies. From the ministries, it transcends to the common man. It transcends mm. to everyone else who is involved on the lower rung of the ladder. So when we talk about people not maximizing, who are the people? Who are we? Number one is the government. And when you talk about the government, like I did say, it's not about the Senate or the House of Reps. There are ministries involved mm. who well, are saddled MD, with... The yes, government. the MDAs. Yeah. There, are, there are people, there are ministries, there are agencies, there are parastatals who are saddled with the responsibility of ensuring that investments are consistently brought to Nigeria. Nigeria consistently attracts investments. So at any juncture where the government is, has attracted investments, are these MDs following through? Are these ministries following through? Are mm. the parastatals following through? And then what is the communication with the people on the, on the ro- lower rung of the ladder? Like meaning the companies you think you can work with, the companies mm. you think you can partner with to implement all of these agreements that have been put together. What is your communication? What's your relationship like? Okay. So it's a, it's a whole lot of factors combined into one.